research projects which are fit for that uh, with the so-called multi-actor approach. And uh, we have, I mean, for those of you who uh, read the work program and try to understand what we propose and want to, uh, to, to make proposals, there is a very long footnote on what we consider is a multi-actor approach. Um, so key entities, I will try to, uh, to, to, to spend more time on those key entities today, I mean operational groups, that will be implemented within the rural development uh, program, we still follow, <laughs> it's still simple at this stage, and, uh, and then of course, I mean, we have, we want to have, it's not just, uh, I mean, to have groups working on specific problems, uh, trying to, to innovate actually, uh, it's also that, um, it's very important that uh, we put the pipes to link the groups to make sure that the information which is generated in the south of Europe is also uh, can be used by people in other places uh, places in Europe. So we we want also to uh, to foster <coughs> communication, partnering, dissemination, knowledge flows, and uh, uh, at the EU level. I don't think it is necessary that I. Uh, I stayed too much in this. I mean, this is uh, in a few more lines what I was just saying, and that we want to link the farmers, and the idle researchers, businesses. I mean, the actors that uh, should be involved in a, in a, in a project to, 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 to come up with a concrete innovation uh, in, those, in those operational groups. So, knowledge exchange, as I was mentioning and come up with focused uh, solutions that uh, can be put uh, into practice uh, more quickly. And what we want to have is uh, co-ownership. I mean, people also speak about co-innovation, but we try to have, I mean, people working from day one uh, together to, uh, to, uh, to, to find solutions. So for the farmers or other stakeholders to put their questions, to discuss with the researchers, okay, this is what we would like to do. I mean, how can you help us? We have those research questions and so on. Then the researcher comes and says, well, we could do that. But then they say, no, we have already done it and so on. So an in, in interactive process from the beginning to the end, and not just that we have uh, a kind of a small project and, uh, and then at the end we have a conference where uh, information is disseminated to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to some farmers and so on, which we consider is not, is not, is not sufficient. So, a bit to uh, sum up what I was saying before, European Innovation Partnership, with a very nice logo. Well, I find it nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, partly implemented, or for a big part implemented through rural development programs. So, support for the setting up and also activities of um, the, what we call the operational groups, I have spoken a little bit about that. We also have, I mean, different uh, series of uh, measures in rural development programs, I mean, access to advice, I mean, training and so on, which are there to, I mean, to contribute to what we call also, not just the Eurocrat, but I mean, the agricultural knowledge and innovation systems. So that, I mean, those pipes to have, uh, to have knowledge uh, flow, we don't touch Education, unfortunately, because that's not, uh, I mean, the, the policies we are dealing with are, uh, do not extend to education, although it is a very critical, critical aspect. So, uh, access to advice, training, and so on. And then we have, on the side of Horizon 2020, the framework program, we have, what I was saying, there is a big footnote uh, in the web program, where we explain what we, uh, intend to have, how we want to have the project work uh, in Horizon 2020. These are multinational projects, they are quite big projects, but at least that we want that there is some levels of co-creation uh, and uh, uh, yeah, that the involvement of the stakeholders is not just, uh, they attend a couple of uh, workshops and that's done, I mean that there is really uh, co-working. Co so we will see how that will work because I mean, it's not that easy also to, to implement. And we have also to foster knowledge exchange. We have also what we call those uh, so-called thematic networks on some specific areas uh, to, 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 to recapitulate, to map, to, to see what are the, the gaps, the needs and so on. And also 
uh, what information is relevant for practice to fit to the uh, to the uh, to the to, to the EIP. Um, we had uh, we had 10 million euros in 2014 for those uh, thematic networks. Uh, there are four or five. Uh, there are four that have passed the test, and there is one, I think, which is uh, uh, specifically dealing with uh, organic issues. So uh, congratulations for those who, who are part of this, uh, of this network. But there will be another, another, another 10 million euros for uh, 2015, and we'll, we intend to continue that also, hopefully, uh, in, in subsequent years. Because this, I mean, rural development, this is more regional, national, this is uh, international level. So we can't have a direct link between, uh, between these two policies because, I mean, an operational group, I mean, can be involved in, uh, in, uh, in a research project under Horizon 2020, but there is not a one-to-one -one match. I mean, they, they need to go through the process. So there is no immediate link, but what we want to establish is kind of an ecosystem with the, this network uh, working as a kind of a marketplace uh, to link everybody together. You tell me if I'm too long, yeah? Yeah, so um, the rural development programs are being uh, adopted now. We have uh, about uh, 120 rural development programs. There will be about 10 adopted at the end of the year, 10 early next year and uh, the rest uh, in the first semester of 2015. So you could say it starts uh, quite slowly, but I mean, once they, are, uh, once they are up and running, then there will be calls for uh, applications to the, uh, for, for the operational groups, for instance. What we can say, I mean, DIP is a, is a very new measure, but at least what we see is that it will be implemented in most member states with various approaches, huh? of course, because uh, at the commission level, we say, okay, guys, that should be bottom up and so on, open, because, I mean, it's not for bureaucrats, uh, wherever they are, to, uh, to know to where innovation or how innovation should take place. So this is for, uh, for, uh, for farmers uh, to, uh, to decide on that. So bottom up, still, these this rural development programs are developed with some, I mean, we do a, uh, or the, the member states do a SWOT analysis about, I mean, what they want to develop in the, the specific regions and so on, so you can have some, some different approaches than more on some thematic areas than others, or still you can have member states who have open calls next to calls which are more thematic and so on. So there will be a large variety of uh, implementation of the CIP, which uh, from a economist point of view or researcher point of view will be extremely interesting to, uh, to analyze in a couple of years. And Horizon 2020, I already spoke about it. So, who could be part of an operational group? I mean, whoever. You need, uh, it's a partnership, so you need to have uh, two entities together, otherwise it's not quite a partnership. But, I mean, SMEs, big enterprises, NGOs, farmers, advisors, researchers, um, whoever uh, is welcome. But I mean, these are no, no talking shops and no networks. I mean, that's to, to, to come up with something uh, with concrete results. So here are the slides, the most, most interesting slides, actually. Um, so bottom up, complying with the objectives of the rural development programs, that's what I was saying. I mean, a group implements a concrete innovation project. Again, I mean, at least what we would see at the EU level is that this is very open. So new product, pra practice, service, production process, new way of organizing things. Um, <clears throat> innovation the same, I mean, whatever types of innovation, I mean, technological, non-technological, organizational, social, whatever you call them, they should, be, they should be in. So new ways of doing business, new business models, whatever. It is action and result oriented. And to the benefit for, to, to be, uh, yeah, co-creation and, co and cross-fertilization. I mean, these are also buzzwords that we like to use at the moment. And it combines their relevant uh, competencies, so practical, scientific, farmers, advisors, researchers, and so on, to reach the project objective. There is no uh, obligation to include a uh, researcher, I mean, uh, but, but there can be uh, uh, five farmers in a group, I mean, 
So standalone research, even applied research, I mean in loose times of uh, budget constraints at the national level, are not supposed to be financed by that. I mean that's clearly something which is uh, uh, led by the uh, led by the sector. I mean. We are not here to replace a uh, short uh, shortage of uh, financing in uh, regions or member state level. And what we would like to have is that we have uh, all sorts of operational groups, I mean small ones, big ones, I mean, I mean whatever. An obligation which is very important is that if there is dissemination of evidence. They say this will be uh, this will be mandatory. We want that this information is of use for the, the, the group, but uh, as much as possible is also uh, disseminated. And we provide support, or the railroad development program will provide support for the setting up and the, uh, of the group and, and the, the cost of uh, project implementation. Uh, different measures which are there to facilitate, I mean, uh, innovation and knowledge exchange. I don't insist on them. They will be posted on the internet, so uh, and we can discuss uh, afterwards if you want. Here, oh yeah, okay, I'm almost finished. Uh, innovation brokering, I mean, intermediary organizations, of course, I mean, they will play a crit critical role uh, to facilitate this. I mean, because uh, to understand what uh, is a rural development, I mean, how do you have to apply even for uh, for funding? Sometimes is a bit complicated, even for uh, for bureaucrats who are used to uh, huge amounts of uh, bureaucracy. So, I mean, you need also some facilitators also to help with that. To so there are possible so with rural development programs to, to facilitate that, to establish networks and so on. So that's, uh, it's not just operational groups who are important. And we have at the EU level, we have also a <coughs> network with, a, um, with a also a help desk function and also a very nice website which has just been uh, set up and which is uh, supposed to work, uh, I mean, it is uh, a participatory website. I mean, people will input the, the, the projects, uh, whatever, the activities that they have. They will have access to a set of keywords, but I mean, this will be uploaded by, by the, uh, all the groups, whoever is uh, involved in research and innovation in agriculture, even if it is not related to the EIP directly. But that will be that will be fully bottom up, and normally it should also be uh, in uh, it should also be multilingual. And what we would like is that also, for instance, once that 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 uh, I mean that we have a, a series of uh, operational groups and so on, it also helps. I mean, serves as a kind of a marketplace to link people who are interested. In, and for I don't know, Horizon 2020, looking for partners and so on. I mean. You should be able, at some point in time, to find a lot of uh, contacts there. I don't. Uh, yeah, I already spoke about Horizon 2020 and, um, and the EIP. So we have tried to come up with a toolbox to foster knowledge exchange and innovation, trying to cover the whole range of activities. I mean, uh, the, at the level of the farmers, the, the, the sector, also linking with researchers and so on. Uh, trying to do that with the instruments that we have, so we can do everything. We, we have also some formats and so on, so it's not perfect, but at least uh, we have tried to do our best. Um, what is nice is that the EIP, although it is, it is a very recent measure, I mean, it has been taken up by all member states. It will maybe not start huge, but like a leader, for instance, uh, it took a leader, I mean, that's been implemented for 20 years more and now. And I guess in the first two years it was small, but I mean, there is potential for growth. And then in 2020, we'll take lessons and we will make maybe it bigger, it works. And what we aim at, as in what I just said before, I mean, uh, trying to, yeah, to contribute to the ecosystem of innovation, <coughs> and establish links between different possibilities uh, of funding or support of uh, ways of doing, doing uh, research and innovation uh, work. 